Let us imagine. What do we actually want our world to become? Not as it presently is and is becoming with finance and blockchain. Not as financial technologies are presently used, but how we wish them to be used. Let's imagine that the year is now 2020. Capital is distributed and a P2P relation. That there are no banks, at least not as they exist today. And that finance has increasingly become free of its current misuses. That's a glimpse of a video made by Robin Hood Media about a project in the financial world that's being called Another Way to Occupy Wall Street. It's an activist hedge fund, if you like, using financial technology to democratize finance. Raphael Chap, a former VP of tax law at Goldman Sachs, is now the co-founder of a suite of investment tools under this Robin Hood banner. Could finance capital really be used to, de to redistribute power and resources and not just to amass private wealth? Perhaps. Raphael, tell us a little bit about what we just saw. There's a London office of, of this Robin Hood operation. What right. are we looking at? We have an algorithm, we call it the parasite, and what it does is it replicates the investments of what we consider to be insiders on Wall Street. Um, so we, we form a portfolio that replicates those investments, and so far we've gotten great returns. I think last year was 40% return, which made it the second hedge fund in the world. Uh, but of course, you know, it's a little bit of um, impertinence. We're trying to hack it, derail it. Um, so deprivatize deep, all that private information sure, about the markets. Sure, and I think that it's just a very small dent. You know, if you think about all the types of strategies out there that hedge funds are using to make investments, we're we're just we're basically mim mimicking a very small segment. There are things that we could not track or trace. Um, uh, high frequency trading, for example, you have hundreds of trades happening yeah. every minute. We wouldn't be able to do that, but we do our best to hack it with the tools we have. Are there things you wouldn't invest in that they're investing in? Um, well, uh, they're taking a very um, ethically blind approach. Um, if a company that manufactures weapons is a good investment, we invest in it. Um, I might have my own reservations, but other than that, sure. So yeah. replicate the budget, uh, replicate mm -hmm. the pattern, the investments, the investments generate some profits and returns right. for your members, but then do some different things with them. Um, well, what we do is we reinvest a portion of those profits, and we actually um, use that to f to fund people's art art projects. People who would no not normally have access to finance to 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 get funded for their products. So that's that's a separate side of Robin Hood. You are putting more money into some industries. We talked about armaments. Yes. We don't want more money in. Sure, and that's that's what's driving our efforts to actually move into Robinhood 2.0, uh, Robinhood Financial Services, where we try to take the positions that, hey, we need alternative financial assets. Um, so we need to have individuals, small businesses, startups, need to be able to issue their own securities um, and we, that's something we would want to invest in. But right now, we're still trying to create those markets. So we're trying to create a platform where people could go on, engineer their own capital structure, issue securities, and we would try to connect those people with investors. Um, of course, we have to work around issues of transparency, how to build trust. But essentially, we want to empower alternative financial markets uh, to help the general public, both on the investor side and on, on the issuer side, to use those tools to create um, an alternative parallel e economy. Mm. And how did you get involved in this? I mean, you were in the heart of finance capital at Goldman Was. Sachs, removed from everything looking like the commons and removed from most regular people. Your clients were presumably fairly major investors. Uh, yes, I was. I was working at Goldman Sachs, and I was structuring their tax uh, financial strategy. Uh, Avoidance uh, strategy. Uh, <laughs> <Just> <laughs> I kidding. didn't say it. <laughs> uh, tax minimization. There you go. Um, but I got appetite for, I wanted to understand about finance in the broader sense. Um, so I got curious about economics and finance. I was originally a tax attorney. I decided to pursue a PhD in economics. Um, I started in 2008, which was just as Perfect. the world was collapsing. So I, 
I got a little bit of uh, interesting timing there. Um, yes, I mean, it's been uh, an interesting trajectory. I think most people who are in this world maybe stay there, but I was more driven by intellectual curiosity and sort of gr intellectual growth. So I felt I had capped a little bit and wanted to pursue other interests. So that's how I ended up um, doing my PhD. Right now I'm working on the link between finance and wealth inequality. I'm trying to understand if financial markets work for the same for everyone or if some people get better returns because they have um, uh, advantages that regular investors don't. Finally, are we talking about a future then without investment banks? Potentially, um, or a future where instead of having just a few major investment banks, uh, you might have a more decentralized network of um, underwriters um, because there's still a role to play for investment banks, the issue of uh, uh, building trust, you know, due diligence, uh, reducing the risk of frauds. So You, you know, may have a greater confidence in, than I do that they do <laughs> any of those things. <laughs> but I think what I'm hearing is we could see a future with more financial institutions that instead of being too big, perhaps are too small to fail, mm -hmm. too well connected, too embedded in communities. Right, right. Um, it's an interesting point. You know, the technology is there now that, that financial assets could be traded and they could be traded on uh, um, open source platforms. So potentially we no longer need a stock market or um, a clearinghouse of some sort. But there are still issues, sure. of course, having to do with concentration of these new markets. You know, at the beginning, the internet was very decentralized and now it's very concentrated. So this is the same thing might happen. Mm. So um, the potential for more democracy is there, but that doesn't mean that there aren't hurdles or barriers. So yeah. speak to somebody out there. You're a former Goldman Sachs VP. This is bread and butter to you. You understand this stuff. Talk to somebody out there before we close who maybe is feeling completely intimidated and lost at this point. Why is this area of finance um, something to get mm. involved in? Well, look, you have savings. What do you do with them? You can put them in the bank. Savings account, are, the rates are very low. Pathetic. You can put it in the stock market, uh, but maybe the risk return profile is actually not that attractive. Um, S&P 500, the performance for a diversified portfolio has not been that great. So, you know, maybe um, you can actually get higher returns by investing in your peers, in small businesses, um, and maybe in startups, even though startups do have a higher level of risk, but maybe overall you have a better risk return profile and you arguably could have um, a more empowering relationship to finance rather than view it as um, something that yeah. is scary. You know, you might, you might have um, a more of an ability to have a say um, in, in what these, in, in the governance of these, of these entities. I'm certainly hearing, don't leave it to those guys on Wall Street to figure out what to do with our great big assets. Raphael, thank you so much. It's fascinating You're very welcome. talking to you. I, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You can find out more at our website.